We are in sunny Dartmouth today on the south coast of Devon. This is a town we've not visited before and we're excited to explore this coastal town. Dartmouth is an English town on the south coast of Devon. It's located in a picturesque spot along the English Channel and the west bank of the River Dart estuary. It's a popular tourist destination, as well as the home to the Britannia Royal Naval College. This was our first time seeing the sea after finishing quarantine, so we were excited to explore the town and spend time by the water. Of course, I also managed to find a few magenta flowers around town that I had to pose next to. I had never seen this before, so I was very interested to observe the crabbing that people do along the water's edge. As this sign explains, you can grab a bucket and spend time capturing some feisty crabs. You just have to handle them carefully and then tip them out of the bucket and back into the water when you are done. Here is a visit we had with a lovely couple who demonstrated how it all works. You guys want to tell me your names? Uh, my name's Alex. Alex, okay. Oh, my name's Rachel. Rachel, and are you guys from Devon? We're from Wolverhampton in the Midlands. Oh, okay. Near Birmingham. Oh, quite nice as well. yeah, yeah, it's not Devon, as nice as Devon. Well. <laughs> Just came down yesterday for a few days. Wow. Nice place for a weekend holiday. Yeah. yeah. So they like to eat bacon then? They love smoked bacon. Smoke I think bacon. They, they prefer it's smoked to buck bacon. And no, that crabby's like pinching at it and just munching away at that piece of bacon. It's yeah, fascinating. It. We didn't have a piece of bacon in the bucket before, but we felt a bit mean because we were hooking them with bacon and they don't actually get to eat any of it. Oh, listen so, to these humane crabbers. So show me what you're doing here. So there's a, there's a net on the end which you fill... Oh, I've just lost it. <laughs> you fill the net with bacon. And they just kind of claw onto oh, the net. Oh, you're kidding. They just, they just hang on to it like that. That is fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, grab them. <laughs> so five started off hanging on to the bacon sack and ended up with two making it into the bucket. <laughs> um, oh, I bet he pinched you. It's not all bad. They've got this bacon to fight over. Yeah. Now there's a full-on crab war going on. Next, we decided to check out this cool 16th century fort further down the coast. We are in Baynard's Fort in Dartmouth. Ian is crouching in one of these gun placements where they put the cannons. You can see the water little boat behind him. This was the last line of defense for Dartmouth. They had a big chain that they draped across the entrance to the harbor. And they had a castle at the entrance to the Why did they have a chain draped across? Prevent ships, enemy ships from coming in. Honestly, we just enjoyed being out of lockdown and being able to sit along the water, watching the river boats, the sailboats, the people on paddle boards, and all the other water activity. Then we headed a mile down to the mouth of the estuary to find the castle and took this fun drone footage to show the beautiful blue water from a bird's eye view. Dartmouth Castle is over 600 years old, and in the 1400s, it was one of the first English fortifications to have a gun tower with a cannon designed to sink enemy ships. The castle saw action during the Civil War and was in service up until World War II. We hadn't booked ahead, so we didn't tour inside the castle, but we did enjoy the lovely views from the castle grounds. Dartmouth has lovely houses up and down the hillside, certainly all of them with stunning sea views and these tiny little back streets flying all kinds of flags including the american flag we needed a snack to tide us over until dinner 
Even though Ian was born in Jamaica, he's not a fan of ginger cake, so he took a pass on this offering and instead sought out a place for an ice cream cone. Salted caramel, if I recall, is the flavor he chose. And I found this yummy little goat cheese and red pepper quiche, which I enjoyed on the water's edge. Dartmouth has some wonderful architecture. There is a Cornish bakery, which I'm not going to eat at because I'm going to Cornwall next week. But along this row of interesting buildings is this one here on the end, built in 1664. That is really leaning quite a bit. This is Dartmouth's St. Saviour's Church. And St. Saviour's Church is about three feet away from the Seven Stars, which is Dartmouth's oldest pub. This church has some beautiful Gothic architecture. And even, I think that's a little rose window. And the clock tower has the gold numbers on the clock to shine in the sun. The inside of that rose window has the most amazing stained glass images of angels. They're just gorgeous. The columns and arches look very old as does this font. It looks quite ancient. The most fascinating part of this church to me is the wooden carving on this pulpit and this screen across the nave. The detail is just really beautiful. The church was founded in 1286. The church also has a lot of decor from celebrating 400 years since the Mayflower, including this bunting, this little bunting from Wisconsin, and then these pilgrim Mayflower 400. and more pilgrim buntings over here, celebrating the connection between Dartmouth and the American colonies. Dartmouth was one of the ports that the Mayflower took on passengers and went from, along with other ports like Plymouth. On the way from Dartmouth to Salcombe, we drove through a tiny village called Coombe, which has some gorgeous thatch cottages I had to include in this vlog. One of the fun things about thatched cottages is that sometimes on the top they have a bird made out of the thatch. This looks like the peacock. We were driving down the road and I saw this sweet thatched cottage and then I noticed the magenta roses by the window and thought I have to stop. Now we're in Salcombe which like Dartmouth is on an estuary that is famous for its sailing, especially for the regatta that Salcombe has every year that goes over several days. Salcombe is known as a center for sailing. This fun little time-lapse video gives you an idea of what you'll see if you find a nice spot in Salcombe to perch and watch the water. It shows a flurry of activity as all the boats go to and fro along the Kingsbridge estuary. We had fun discovering a few neat areas during our wander around Salcombe, including this lane with pretty pastel homes and this interesting old water fountain. First, I noticed the water fountain just for dogs at the appropriate height. And then I noticed this curious sign over the top of the fountain, which made me wonder what shenanigans had been occurring at this fountain that warranted the sign being placed here. Then it was my turn to have ice cream. So we found the best ice cream place in town, which makes their own ice cream right there in Salcombe. And I set out to find an interesting flavor to try. 
we're about to have dinner, and so normally I wouldn't say it's okay to have ice cream, but Ian was begging for more ice cream, and I went in just to take a look and discovered they had popcorn flavored ice cream. I've never seen that before, and I super love popcorn, so I have to try it. Mmm, it's really buttery. Actually, oh, and it's caramely. It tastes like a salted caramel. And there are bits of popcorn in it. It's really good. While we're here in Salcombe, I decided to try finding a crab sandwich because one of my subscribers said I really needed to try eating a crab sandwich. And I try to listen to my subscribers. This is one of the few places that's open today that serves crab sandwiches, and it actually has really good reviews. And it's right here on the water, so it looks like a pretty fun place. So everyone in the know knew that they were supposed to book in advance to come have dinner this Sunday evening at the crab shed. But we didn't know that, so we just walked up and expected to be able to eat dinner. And we weren't allowed in the restaurant because they're fully booked. But they sent us out here to this bar. And this is where we're sitting on bar stools eating our dinner, which is fine with us because we have a nice view of the water. But what's even funnier is that we're joined by these people who we have something in common with. Hi. Hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me your first names and where you're from. Uh, my name is Elena. My name is Mike. And we are from Chicago, Chicago, by way of Denver, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> and currently they live in? In Oxford. Oxford. So, so Elena and I also have in common that I grew up in the Chicago area. Exactly. Oh. But, uh, but yeah, so they're living here in England. And when they walked up and I heard their American <laughs> accent, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to hear other American accents. So I think it's just funny that the only Americans in this restaurant have been banished to the outside table. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was because we didn't have a reservation, but really it's because uh, we're American. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so what it back for uh, the revolution. <laughs> Wait, yeah. So so you what did you call this area? You said it was the uh... oh, This is the 13 Colonies out here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we're we're going to enjoy our crab sandwiches at the 13 Colonies bar. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a bite of the Salcombe crab sandwich. That's delicious. The bread is really fresh. They make it here every day. It's delicious. And it's just packed with tons of fresh crab and this really yummy dressing that they have on it. Highly recommend. Be sure to check out my Britain Love Stories series to find out all the reasons why I'm such a crazy Anglophile. And to follow our other adventures, be sure to subscribe and click the bell button so you are updated when new videos become available. Thanks so much for watching our adventures today and do something good in the world.